You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Well, happy Freestyle Friday, everybody. I am Glenn Geek in Ocala, Florida. And I am Lisa Wysocki, and today I'm in Mound, Minnesota. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Friday, March 29th, episode 3397. This episode is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. Good morning, Horse World. <laughs> Take off with us on the first annual Horses in the Morning Equestrian Travel Week. An entire week devoted to your future equestrian travels. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for filling in today. I appreciate it. And Jamie appreciates it as well. Well, I am so glad to be here. She's uh, down dealing with her mom issues in Florida again. So uh, I know we called you last minute. And uh, I'm glad you bring your microphone to Minnesota when you visit your mom. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Actually, I'm leaving one here right now. So Good. just in case. That's perfect. That's, that works out well. Well, it's the last day of Travel Week. We had so much fun this week doing Travel Week. And today we're going to focus on France and Vermont. Uh, we have Stacy Adams from Active Riding Trips, who's going to tell us all about the riding adventures available in France, and that's one of her favorite places to ride. And we have Auditor Aaron uh, Grogan coming on, and Mickey Perry is going to. T- they're going to talk about vacationing and riding in Vermont to see the changing of the leaves up there. They Love a, that. They have a very special ride they do every year, so we're going to hear about that. Uh, there'll be no auditor post show today, just because uh, I have th- uh, appointments to get to. So, and you know what? It's Easter, so happy Easter, everybody! Uh, Absolutely, have a terrific weekend. We hope you get to hang out with family and stuff. Uh, but we have uh, a lot of fun stuff planned for you today. We're going to do some really bad ads later in the day as well. Plus, we're going to give away the prizes for really bad ads for the month. We have the Spalding Fly Predators and the annual subscription for U.S. Rider to give away. So stay tuned to see who wins those. And I'll have you pick those. Okay, Lisa? Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, you get to pick the winner. Yeah. All right, let's do some Daily Winnies. We have a couple of these this weekend. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday to you. <laughs> we have several auditor birthdays this weekend. Michelle Schneider, Paula Hansford, Sarah Gross, and Jackie Baker. Now, Jackie is not an auditor, but she was our first guest on the Horse Radio Network 16 years ago. I remember that, Glenn. That's you amazing. Do? I do. She was yeah. a blogger back then. Uh, yes. She's not even really involved in the horse world. I ended up talking to her last week out of the blue because we're still friends. We've been good friends ever since. She's she's a uh, She works in marketing, like for a big marketing company, and she's super smart. I mean, she's oh, yeah. just one of, uh, you know her. She's one of the smartest yeah. people I know. <laughs> like, yeah, she is. She is. Uh, and I don't know why we're friends. You know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but she, uh, I told her, I said, do you realize it's been 16 years ago you were on the show? I mean, that's just hard to believe. That's amazing. That's amazing. That we've been yeah. doing this that long. This is the longest job I've ever had, Lisa. Well, you know, when you like what you do and you're having fun, it's like a vacation every day. <laughs> I wouldn't say that sort so of. much, but yeah, <laughs> there's still some work involved, but it is fun. I will give you that. This is yeah. the most fun part of what I do right here, talking on the there mic with, with you guys. That's the most fun part. All right, your turn for a Daily Winnie. <laughs> So, Glenn, my daily Winnie also involves a birthday, and it is my mother's birthday tomorrow. And you know how old she's going to be, Glenn? Well, I remember her in her 90s. Well, tomorrow she's going to be 101. Wow. Yeah, 101. She was a Marine in World War II. She drove a supply truck in Panama, and uh, she's just been the biggest inspiration of my she's life. She's one she- of very few, probably oh, yeah. female World War II vets around. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the Women's Marine Association gave her this certificate for her 101st birthday, uh, which she just, you know, kind of took it in stride. But everybody, all the neighbors and everybody's taking pictures of it because it's so cool. But I wonder, you know, they didn't give her anything for her 100th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> just She made it to 101. Now we can celebrate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyway, happy birthday to my mom. And, and if anybody's well, listening who God. knows her, don't say I said anything because she gets really embarrassed. She lived a life. That means she was born probably in the in the Nin- 30s or 20s 19, 1923 23 wow yeah 1923 so she was so. a kid during the roaring 20s lived through the depression Yep, lived through World War II, and and uh, you know she just she was a single mom. My dad left shortly after I was born, and and she she just raised me as a single parent. And she was president of the PTA for the whole school district, not just for the school. And she was on the city park commission, and she founded a mental health halfway house for teens. And I mean, she's just been amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so so you so I didn't realize that you, she was a single mom all that time. Yeah. Yeah, we lived with my grandmother and uh you know Was it uh, always think- up there in Minnesota? Yeah. 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 My, my, so the house that I'm in, that I'm sitting in right now, my grandparents bought the property in 1948 and um we've been been here ever since. So, uh, you know, what's amazing when you think about when she was born, when you say 23 or 27, so 23, 23, she was born just after world war one ended. I know. Is that not crazy? (laughs) You were, we're watching Downton Abbey again for like the 10th oh, time. I love that we're, show. We started at the beginning and we're watching, we're almost, we're in the last season now. Yeah. And that's the, about the time they're in is the ni- mid 1920s is yeah. what they're in right now. Yeah. And so the things your mom has seen. Yes. Oh, I just keep thinking, you know, I mean, uh, you know, her family was not rich by any means, but they were, you know, solidly middle class. But, but, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I just remember when we got microwaves and, and, you know, yeah. I remember we didn't even have a TV when I was little. And a lot of people. Oh, when she was little, she didn't that. have a phone. No, no, no. no. TV, uh, you know, they had a radio, but. But, um, you know, it's just everything that she's seen, you know, people walking on the moon and, and um, you know, her biggest thing, though, was when they found the Titanic. <laughs> she, said, she said, they'll never find that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. Well, and she was born not too long after the Titanic sank either. I mean, Yeah, 1912, I think, yeah. the Titanic sank. Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of still a big thing when she was growing up, you know, because, you know, so many people were lost and so many people had Have family Have you ever sat friends. down with a recorder and recorded her for a couple hours? She won't. She Even, won't. I mean, you just doing it for yourself? Yeah, no, no, she won't. I, I pull just little bits and pieces of information from her just uh, every time I'm here visiting, but she won't, you know, she said it's too much bother and, and uh, you know. <laughs> can't be bothered at 101. No, no. <laughs> or even well, when she was 81, you know. <laughs> well, geez, happy birthday to her. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So we're talking about travel this year and I, or this week, and I knew that you probably have a travel story for us. Well, I do. I do. But but it's not a vacation story, Glenn, because honestly, you know, the last vacation, this is going to date me, but the last vacation I took was in 1978. We need to get you out more. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know, I do a lot of work things, and and to me, that's that's a vacation. So this this happened about twenty years ago, and um, I was running a record label for the country music artist Paul Overstreet. And if you don't know Paul, he he's a country Christian artist. He's the only five time BMI artist or songwriter of the year. BMI is Broadcast Music Inc. It's the big songwriter governing body and just an amazing song. He has written songs. He has had 30, more than 30 number one hits. And so he had his little record label and I was his publicist and running his record label. And so I was traveling with him uh, for a year or two. And so when he'd go out on tour, I'd I'd go out with him and, and with the band. And we were in Arizona. Uh, and he needed a photo shoot. So I set something up at Old Tucson Studios. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Have you ever been there? No. Uh-uh. So you got to go. It's amazing. So all of like the the sets for all of the Westerns, like the movie Three Amigos and Little House on the Prairie and Young Riders and, and some of Gunsmoke and all of that, they were all filmed at Old Tucson Studios. 
And it's now it's kind of a tourist attraction. So anyway, I, I just called them up and I said, you know, I had Paul was a really big artist at the time. And, and I said, you know, I've got Paul and he'd like to come out. Can we do a photo shoot? And they were like just falling all over themselves to to say yes. And um, at that time in my life, Glenn, I had been out of horses for a little bit. You know, life had just kind of led me kind of away from, from all the horses. And so we got there and they wanted to do this photo shoot in front of all the sets. Well, the only way to get to these sets is by horseback. Mm. So, so I got on on this horse. It, he was an off track thoroughbred named Trooper. That's what that you would was, imagine would be in in the desert of uh, well, exactly. Arizona. <laughs> Exactly. No ranch horse or, you know, anything like that. No, no. quarter horses no. around uh, Arizona? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. And so uh, so we rode way out in the desert and we were taking all of these photos and we saw the old Tucson Studios set. We saw like the little house on the prairie set that they hadn't been struck at that time. And, and we saw all these sets and we did all these really cool photo shots. And, and um, the one thing they kept saying to me. Um, because I had to get off the horse during the shoot to kind of, you know, help the photographer and all that. And they said, don't back up into the cactus. So do you know what I did, Glenn? Go back <laughs> to the, one of those huge, Oops. huge cactuses. A cacti, I guess it is. And so I had cactus-like stingers in the back of my thigh, I don't know, six months. <laughs> awful. Don't ever do that. It was awful. And uh, – but, you know, the, the whole thing, Glenn, the, the neat thing about it and the reason I wanted to tell this story in particular was that got me back into horses. Just just that that horse trooper and that whole experience, I, I thought, you know, I have to get back into horses. And that's when I got into um, therapeutic riding. Huh. I didn't know that was the motivation. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And uh, and I'd only been out of horses six or seven years. I mean, not not a long time, but. Um, but yeah, I thought I have to wait to find a way to get back in. And so, um, it was just, it was just amazing, you know, just being out there. And I think you can so still So you go- literally got poked in the butt. I literally, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, and seriously, I could not sit on that butt cheek one for like six <laughs> Those things are awful. <laughs> so it was the pain of the cactus that reminded you that you wanted to do horses the rest of your life. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I got out of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For Cause, sure. Because so, we know but, there's no pain involved with dealing with horses on a full-time basis. <laughs> none. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And I, I do remember I got a really bad sunburn that, that day, and I'm always really good about covering up but for some reason i got a sunburn that day and and but i think glenn i think people can still go there and take a trail ride huh. yeah oh. i think you can go to old tucson studios and, and take a trail ride so if you're ever in that area go because it's it's really it's just so much fun i just looked it up and old tucson studios is still open i'm not sure about a trail ride but you can still do the tour yeah, you have to go because um, they tell you all about the, the filming of all the, the Westerns and you get to see uh, this saloon that if you look at the Westerns and some of the shows, it's in just about every single show that there ever was. And you, so now I watch a Western, I say, oh, I've been there at that saloon. And, um, you know, they've, they've got the, the Adobe Church from the Three Amigos movie. It's just it's just amazing. And the people there are super nice. I'm just looking, and uh, you can ride your bike. They have trails and hiking trails and all that kind of stuff. And in every picture on their website, they have those cactus you were talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go to Stacy Adams. Uh, she, is, right after this word from Kentucky Performance Products, she is with Active Riding Trips, and they offer trips around the world. But one of the main destinations they have is France, and that's one of her favorite places to ride, so we thought we'd talk about France today. This Nutritional Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. One of the most common mistakes seen in feeding programs is the underfeeding of commercial concentrates. Commercial concentrates are textured or pelleted feeds that provide energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Some common manufacturers are Triple Crown, Neutrina, Purina, you get the idea. Every commercial feed has a minimum amount you must feed in order to meet a horse's daily vitamin and mineral requirements. For most commercial concentrates, that level is somewhere between 4 to 6 pounds per day. A lot of horses will get too fat consuming feed at that level, so owners and barn managers feed less, and rightly so. It's not healthy for a horse to get too fat. 
However, if you are feeding less than the recommended minimum amount to your horse, you are not providing your horse with adequate nutrition. Microphase Vitamin and Mineral Supplement from Kentucky Performance Products can solve your problem. Microphase can be added to the diet as needed to fill in the nutritional gaps. Packed with nutrients but low in calories, you can adjust the feeding level of Microphase to meet your horse's requirements. Learn more about Microphase by visiting kppusa.com. Got questions about your feeding program? We can help. Email Karen at questions at kppusa.com or call us at 859-873-2974. Stacy, thanks for joining us on our final day of Travel Week. Oh, it's so great to be here, Glenn and Lisa. Thank you so much. So Stacy runs a company called Active Riding Trips. And tell us a little bit about the company. Sure. We've been in business since 2003. We... Uh, I guess I should say we really are bespoke trips. We have over 100 trips in 17 different countries on the website. We curate these trips for riders. So these are really designed for folks that that ride regularly, that want to go out and experience a culture, you know, and the great riding. And, you know, we, we really, we cater to the folks that we really are. I mean, they are us. So we have a lot of fun. What were what before you did this? What what'd you do before this? <laughs> a lifetime ago, I was a corporate trainer. I worked for a Fortune 200 company. I traveled all up and down the East Coast teaching their. Oh, this sales is much teams. more fun than that boring yeah, job. Yeah, way more fun. <laughs> I, it was it was travel in 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 a work respect. Yeah. Whereas this is travel in a super great fun respect. Yeah, that was travel to the to conference rooms. This is much better. Mm. Much better. Way better. <laughs> way better. And plus, it's got horses. I mean, you know, it's it, you couldn't ask for anything more of a blessing in life, in my opinion. You have trips to uh, Argentina, Botswana, Canada, I mean, all over the world. And uh, some fascinating trips on here. But one of the places I noticed you probably offer the most trips is France. And that's what we wanted to talk to you about today. And it turns out that France is one of your favorite places to ride. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, my first trip on horseback to France was around mm, 2007, and I had the great opportunity to go. I should back up by saying one of the things that makes our trips really unique is that we won't offer a trip unless we've actually taken it. So it's a real hardship, I'll tell you. But sometimes you suffer so much. Yeah. (laughs) But it's, you know, like we, we ride the horses, sleep in the beds, eat the food. So, so literally, when we talk to folks, we are speaking from personal experience, and there's not anybody else out there that can really say it on a hundred percent of the level like we can. So, you know, my first trip way back in in the early 2000s was to Provence, and that was such a unique experience. I mean, an area. So, Provence is south of Paris, a couple of hours, and and then it ends up, you know, down in the Mediterranean, and so it's very very local, wonderful village living. And it was a great springboard because, you know, I had not been to that area before, you know, and, and about the same time, a couple of years later was the first time that I went to Normandy in my entire life. And so coupling an experience like seeing the gravity of Normandy, but then seeing it by horseback is is truly magical. I mean, you're getting to places that you otherwise are, are never getting to. And not to ramble on, but just to say that, you know, after that, all the other great things happened, like riding in Bordeaux and tasting all the famous wines and going to Champagne and, you know, having a little wonderful nose with that. It just, the whole thing is just, it's magic. It's just magic. Now, did you tell me that you had just been uh, over there to the Loire Valley? Was that where you... 
did. Yeah, so last fall, so we offer several trips in the Loire, and last fall I hosted a trip of riders to the Loire. We had the most incredible time. We stayed in, in these wonderful, absolutely exquisite hotels. In fact, the first two nights we stayed literally right underneath Chambord, which is this humongous, very famous chateau, absolutely incredible, and and on our website, you can, and on our social media, you can actually see uh, photographs of one of our guests who's standing on the patio of our of our little wonderful accommodation, holding up a glass of wine, and Chambord is immediately behind her. And that was, we woke up every morning like, you know, like kids in a candy store. So we did. We rode from chateau to chateau. We had tours of these chateaux. We had, we were wined and dined. And I mean, we were royalty. We were absolute royalty for a week. It was simply unimaginable unless you've been there. And, you know, your trips are all – I think one of the things that people do is they look at the prices and they go, well, that's expensive, right? Um, but one of the things that they have to remember about these riding trips is this includes everything. It does. And, you know, when, when you put it in perspective that, for example, a week at Disney World or even a day at Disney World is $500. Yeah, it is know? now. Two and of us to go to Disney World now for a day is 500 bucks. That's right. Yeah. It's crazy. And so when you look at these trips and you figure, you know, on they, they range in price, but let's just say, and most are not as high as $3,000. they are generally a little bit less than that. But, but at $3,000, which is $500 a day, you're getting exquisite accommodation. You're getting all your meals and you're getting full days of horseback riding and, you know, and privately guided. The groups are, are between eight and 10 people at the most. So it's very intimate. And, and I don't have to customized. clean the stalls either, right? <laughs> no, man, you get up in the morning, you have your wonderful little breakfast and, you know, and then you saunter out and mount up. Your horse is already ready for you and off you go. Yeah, I think that's one of the things, even a cruise, you know, we do horse lovers cruises here every every two years and with listeners. And, you know, that's going to cost you three to four thousand uh, dollars. And but so this is the same kind of thing. You have to think about it being all inclusive, um, and, you know, and that's what makes it that's what makes it affordable is that it is all inclusive. If you paid for all this separately, you'd be paying more. Oh, indeed. Yeah. And and again, you're talking about a very small, intimate group, right. which is privately guided. So it's it offers you a, an up-close and personal access to places that otherwise would never be available. And I think, too, one of the things that, uh, you know, all of our listeners are riders, and most of them are, you know, been riding forever. Uh, one of the complaints they have when they go on some trips, uh, you know, is it's it's nose to tail and it's walking. Uh, with the kind of trips that you do, you can kind of cater it based on the abilities of your riders, right? Absolutely. So when someone contacts us to book a trip, we don't actually allow clients to reserve a trip on our website. They can place an inquiry and a request to reserve. We require that they speak to one of us here in the office so that we can not only make sure that the trip is a good fit and is what they want to do, but also that their ability is appropriate for the actual ride. So for example, our Normandy ride that, that goes through all of the venerable places, you know, through go take to the American Cemetery, to the German Battery. You ride on Omaha Beach. I mean, like, you know, you can't even imagine what this is like. But my point was going to be that there's quite a bit of cantering and long days of riding. And so we absolutely have to ensure that people not only are capable, but that they have the stamina to go for several days and be able to enjoy it and, and not you know, have any issues. So in the, let's just, let's take the flip side of that. Someone calls and says, I'm interested in that ride. But then we find out that they really, you know, they're only riding two or three times a week and it's only for about an hour a day. No problem. We have some fantastic rides in Provence, maybe not as venerable sites, you know, historically as Normandy, but they can see the scenery that inspired Cézanne and Van Gogh. I mean, there are plenty of other opportunities 
that that we can hook people into a ride to ensure that the quality is exceptional and that the riding is off the charts. Stacy, I'm yeah, on your website, ahead, and and this is I'm just blown away. I mean, I want to go. I want to go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, girl. Come on. <laughs> My butt hurts just thinking about the all-day rides. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's now bear in mind, you know, when, when I say all day, we're riding about seven hours a day, and that's interspersed with breaks. You get off, you know, you have a break. Obviously, you have a bit of a lunch break. So have some wine, generally... and then some more wine, and then some more <laughs> wine, and then your butt hurts less. Amen, brother. Yeah. Like when we do the Bordeaux ride and, and the Champagne ride, it includes tastings at some of the at all of the vineyards, but some of them are, are super venerable. I mean, I think anyone who who is um, uh, is a wine enthusiast would would know names like Saint-Emilion. Uh, you know, I mean, they're they're quite well regarded. So these are the places that you're going. It's just it's such a unique opportunity. So if Lisa called you up, Lisa hasn't ridden in France, right, Lisa? Never, no. Okay. So if Lisa called you up and said, look, I'm a good rider, and Lisa's a good rider, obviously. Um, so, And I, this is my first trip ever, my first riding trip ever like this. Is there one you would pick in France and go, okay, that's the one you should do? Really, Lisa, you and I would have to have a bit more of a chat about that because I want to know what makes you tick. And this is sort of how we, you know, approach every interaction with folks, and, and of which we have quite a few. I mean, we have now a 1.1 million reach, you know, on, online. So it's uh, we have quite a few conversations to this. But, you know, what is it that really gets the goosebumps going on your arms? Is it is it the chance to see these famous chateau where Marie Antoinette and Napoleon lived. That's is it me. The chance? That's, that's me right <laughs> okay. there. <laughs> you know, that and the well, scenery. That and the scenery. That's me. Yep. Yep. So so those are the conversations that we have. We're like, is it is it the chateau? Is it the luxury? Is it the is it the wine tasting? Is it is it the ancient history? You know, we get that in when we ride in the Dordogne in France, you know, we, we have a chance to see you know, caves with ancient petroglyphs. It's just, it, it, so what is it that makes you tick that really says, oh my God, my life is not, what would be utterly changed if I didn't do this. And then we, you know, match you up and say, okay, here are the ones that best tick those boxes for you. I love that. I love that approach because that way you're setting everybody up for success. You and and your customers and the horses, everybody, and and everybody's going to have a great time. Well, that's the goal, right? I mean, you know, we we are a company that really prides ourselves in doing the right thing for every rider that comes with us, and we want it, it, if it's not if it is not the right fit then everybody suffers. You know, we suffer, you suffer, the other guests suffer. So it's it's really in everyone's interest for us to spend the time and say, this is really the one. And again, we don't dictate it. We just create an expectation that is accurate and also, you know, make sure that it is a match for you. Well, I, the website is activeridingtrips.com. That's where you can find it. And all the different trips are listed on here. The only thing that's missing is I am not a, I am not a rider. I am a carriage driver. We need carriage driving trips on here. Well, we funny you should say that, Glenn, because we are actually in the process of curating an idea. It's, it's a kernel at the moment, but we used to have a fantastic program in Hungary. And so if you're a driver, I think you can appreciate the, you know, how venerable the driving in Hungary is. So we're trying to curate that again and, and, um, I should say, put some life into it. So stay tuned. Okay. And I'm also thinking about a pub call carriage drive in Scotland. Um, that's <laughs> the other thing I'm thinking would be really good is we can just drive the carriages from one pub to another. 
Um, that's my thought. I want to go on that one too. (laughs) Then I will explore that for you because, because it's so funny. You should say that we had a very unique opportunity just this year and I am leading a group of folks to do it. We are literally riding through the Scottish countryside in September of this year. And then on the last day, we ride all day through the Scottish borders and up the Royal mile to Edinburgh castle. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, it's it's off the charts. What an amazing opportunity it is. We we are so excited. Um, I have two spaces left, Glenn, if you want to like, we went, get your saddle feet uh, yeah, going. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we went to the Royal Tattoo um, in, in Edinburgh, and we got mm-hmm. to see that and spend the whole week there. during, And that's during festival, too, which, you know, is interesting there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're, we're super excited because the opportunity to ride with a group of, like, 300 others up yes. the Royal Mile. Is, yes, they call those. Magic. What do they call and those? Um, a the, march. The march. They're called the yeah, march. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep. The, the royal march. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're super jazzed about it. I mean, you know, and and so we feel so blessed and so lucky to when opportunities like this come along to be able to just grab the reins and say, "Come on, we'll and and to be able to participate and to to really lead these rides, a, a hosted ride with our guests. We love it. Well, I think it's fabulous. Uh, I hope that everybody gets a chance to take their dream trip at some point. I know a lot of our listeners have and are are going to. Uh, We've heard from a lot of them about the things they're planning. So I love the idea of one of these group rides, too. It it takes a lot of the work. It takes all the work away from you. You just book it and go. And, you know, we we like cruises. My wife and I like cruises because our hotel's with us. We don't have to do any of the planning. We just show up. And it's kind of the same for trips with you. And that's what I I like about this. ActiveWritingTrips.com. Thanks a bunch for joining us today, Stacey. Appreciate it. Oh, Glenn and Lisa, thank you so much. It was a blast talking to you all. Have a great rest of your weekend. Recharge your training program with Equestrian Plus. Equestrian Plus brings together the top riders, trainers, and professionals onto one video platform. Watch over 5,000 how to training videos, clinic and event footage exclusive training sessions, and more, featuring top experts including five-time dressage Olympian Stefan Peters, international Grand Prix dressage competitor Anna Buffini, Olympic dressage team bronze medalist Laura Graves, and many more. Join Equestrian Plus now and use promo code HRN15 for 15% off your first month. Visit equestrianplus.com to subscribe. So we are talking with Aaron Grogan and Mickey Perry, and they have the Green Mountain Horse Association in South Woodstock, Vermont. And this is so exciting because they have a fall foliage ride that those of you on the East Coast or in New England, you can just trailer your horse up and enjoy all of the fall foliage. This is like one of my dream trips. I can't wait to to do this myself. And um, so Aaron and Mickey, tell us a little bit more about this and how you came up with this idea the fall foliage ride is offered to pleasure riders as you said who have their own horses and they come up for any number of days as many as four or as few as one and they get to ride on um, properties that GMHA has 400 miles of trails on and we have agreements with the landowners offering these spectacular views and it's just a great opportunity for participants to enjoy Vermont, enjoy your horses. You develop lifelong relationships that last many years and even often generations. That's um, amazing. That's amazing. So, Aaron, um, uh, just a real quick question to, to build off of that. Um, how I, I don't know where your website is or how to get a hold of, of, all, of all of you. So let's start with that. Sure. Yeah. So GMHA um, has a website. We offer equestrian competitions in multiple disciplines. So eventing, hunter jumper, driving, um, pleasure trail, uh, and then endurance competitive trail. So there, there's kind of always something going on, dressage events. You know, we're, we're kind of a hub in New England for horse competitions, but we are really well known for this amazing trail system that Mickey just um, just described and the fact that you can come and be a pleasure rider here. Um, you know, if you imagine the most beautiful picture 
of a sunny fall day with the leaves of all kinds of colors around mm. you and put yourself and your horse right in it. That That is what this event is all about. So you can yeah. find us at um, gmhainc.org. Um, all of the details about the event are there. And then there's also a Facebook page um, called the GMHA Distance Days and Trail Riding Community. You can find pictures, more info. Um, all of it is on either the, the website or the Facebook page. Okay, that sounds amazing. So um, if one of you could um, tell us a little bit about like accommodation. So if I bring my horse up and I'm riding on these beautiful trails and lunch is catered by this fabulous pub, where am I going to stay at night? So So. your horses have permanent um, stalls available. And so they have a a nice nice place to stay. And then there are many bed and breakfasts and... um, uh, um, Airbnbs that you can stay in, and those are all listed on our website. Okay. You can check in. I will say that um, people have already booked ahead because this is <laughs> such a popular event. So if you're thinking of coming up, you should act on it um, to secure your, you know, uh, location of where you would like to stay. So, so my, uh, my hook right here is, is I'm looking at, at all of this, you know, private trails that aren't open to the public. Erin, how does that work? I mean, how did you get access to all of those trails? Yeah, well, so GMHA has a very long history in this community, um, and it was really built around the trail system. Um, so we've been here for decades, um, and those relationships with the, the landowners around us have been nurtured for decades. So, so Mickey um, is one of our amazing staff members at GMHA who is responsible not only for planning these events, but she is also responsible for maintaining relationships with all of the people who allow access to these trails. And um, I'm a board member. We have a, a trails committee and ambassadors to make sure that we're in constant communication with, with the people around um, around the venue and that trails are being used respectfully and um, that maintenance is done to help help the landowners keep them open and accessible. So um, I think it is it is a signature strength of this organization and what makes this event really special. Um, and some of these trails are actually only open on a weekend like this. So it's literally the only time of year that you might be able to go up to the, you know, the top of this beautiful, breathtaking hill and look across at the vista and, and the foliage off on the horizon. I mean, it really, it, it it's it's kind of an unbelievable um, opportunity to just to have these views and, and be on these trails that people just don't get access to all the time. So we're very fortunate and, and just very appreciative of the partnership with the community around us. Yeah. And, you know, that's what, what makes it really special to me is, is the, you know, the private access, but also that mm-hmm. it's here in the United States, it's an affordable trip for anybody who's fairly close to the area. So, so Mickey, tell me, so if, if I'm, I'm there, I'm, are, are the trails guided? Do we just kind of have our own schedule? How many people might be there? Just kind of fill us in a little bit about that. Sure. So what we do is we mark the trails and with streamers so that it gives you an idea of, of where to go. But we also do um, a breakfast in the morning and then a briefing that lets you know about the terrain and anything to look out for. But what the, we do is we mark a long loop and a short loop. And, you know, depending on your the condition of your horse and, and how long you want to be out, if you want to do 10 miles or more or, or less, you choose and follow those markers. And we do, as Erin said, um, you know, a, a top of the world lunch on the trail, which is so unique. And then riders finish their loop, come back and um, enjoy a social activity or just dinner on the grounds. And then you can repeat it. Um, wow. I, I'm yeah. just... And I will also... Oh, I, just to add as a, a volunteer, um, I, I tend to not ride in this myself just because I'm lucky. I live here and I can, <laughs> I can ride on similar <laughs> trails during the year. But I, I love volunteering and just seeing the enthusiasm of people who have come from surrounding states. Uh, and at lunch, we have, I don't know, generally a dozen volunteers that maybe that are there to hold your horse for you. So you and your friends can go sit and have lunch together and, you know, look at your photos and think about which ones you like and, <laughs> and all that fun stuff. But we really try to take care of people so they have a good time. You know, like Mickey said, the trails, the, the marking of the trails is always something we get extremely positive feedback about. And we just really want people to come and have fun and just, you know, soak in the full experience. So the volunteers, I think, make it 
um, a special event because they're really there to look after the horses and look after the riders and, and make sure everybody's having a good time. Well, that's good. And that makes that makes sense. You know, you have lunch and, and you know, you want to share lunch time with your horse, maybe, but maybe not quite that up close and personal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so so I'm thinking I'm thinking about Glenn here who doesn't ride, but who drives. Are any of the trails? Is there a chuck viable? wagon? Uh, that I can work on. <laughs> Glenn, this is a driving mecca. <laughs> a lot of yeah. these trails actually are driving accessible. Um, in our competitive events, competitive CTRs and, and the endurance events, um, we do often have a driving component to it. So that that's competitive. That's not necessarily in this, this pleasure event that we're talking about today. But, um, but yeah, this is known as an area that's popular with drivers, um, and, and we're really proud of that. So, Glenn, I, you and Scooter could go. I, I could just do the cooking. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think this is absolutely amazing. And what, what an opportunity because, I mean, I have a lot of friends who every year or every other year, their big thing is they go to New England to look at the foliage because it's so mm-hmm. spectacular. And, and to be able to do that on horseback and also, you know, in a way that, that's safe and you've got some companionship and you've got great food, it sounds like. I mean, what, what a better thing to do. I I mean, I think it's just phenomenal. Yeah. And I, I also will say for the people in your family that aren't riders, because it is right in the heart of foliage season, there's so much going on around town. So Woodstock and South Woodstock, Vermont are, are real, um, you know, destination trips for people, horsey or not. And so there's tons of cafes and, you know, hiking and, and mountain biking, um, anything you'd like to do that kind of has that fall vibe to it, you can do it here. Um, and you don't have to be on a horse, but the people who want to be on a horse could spend, like Mickey said, up to four days in the saddle while the rest of their family is off doing other fun things. So I think it really is a great vacation destination. Cool. So if we want to go, how do we sign up? So what you can do is go to our website and um, it will walk you through. And give us the uh, website eventually. again. Give okay. us the website again. GMHAinc.org, and you would click on events, and it would take you to trails, and then you would scroll through to where it says Fall Foliage Ride, and all the information is there on the uh, on that web page for you to enter. And I, w- I will say, because this is such a popular event, um, we have, in the past three years, had to cap it, because being good stewards of the land that we get to ride on, um, we can't have, we don't want to overuse the properties that we sure. have the privilege of being on. So it is something that fills rather quickly. And um, we, this year in particular, we've, we found two more weekends to offer um, pleasure rides in the fall in October. So uh, we're, we're hearing what's happening and we're trying to accommodate all those people that Aaron spoke about so that they can enjoy it and have um, a wonderful time and, and see all the, the, the beauty that's up in Vermont. That's amazing. So everybody, it's the Green Mountain Horse Association Fall Foliage Ride. So go check it out. I uh, hope you can participate because uh, the scenery is going to be beautiful. And I think the, the uh, companionship and the friends you're going to find are going to be fabulous. So Aaron and Mickey, thank you so much for coming on and telling us about this wonderful event. Yeah, thanks Thank for letting you. us talk about it. We hope to see people this, this fall. It's coming soon. <laughs> Easy, effective, and eco-friendly fly control starts with fly predators. Fly predators are the organic, natural way to dramatically minimize your fly problem. Learn more about fly predators and other Spalding Labs fly control solutions at Spalding, S-P-A-L-D-I-N-G, dash labs, dot com. So it's time for Really Bad Ads this week, and what we're going to do is give away the prizes, and then we're going to play. I went back a couple of years and found a really funny one that Jamie and I did, Really Bad Ads, from a couple of years ago. We're going to play that for you, because Lisa and I both have to get to our holiday weekends. Uh, <laughs> she has to get ready for her mom's birthday, and we got stuff to go in here, so we're going to do that. Uh, but we wanted to make sure we gave away the prizes for Really Bad Ads, and we have two this month, and Lisa's going to pl- pick the winners. Uh, I'm going to give you some numbers to pick from. Okay. So anybody that's basically been in the running since January, I think, uh, since we gave the last prizes away, is now on the spreadsheet. And uh, the first prize we have is a year of the Spalding Fly Predators, which 
I know you all want. So, <laughs> well, we've uh, used them, and they they really do help. They do help a yeah. lot. Yeah, they do work. Uh, and the nice part about this is it's two hundred fifty dollars value, but they you know they send them to you what every four to six weeks. Yeah. Uh, you get them. You get them every four to six weeks, and then you put new ones out because they have a short lifespan too. The little predators. Yeah. So you want to uh, be constantly doing that, and you know a year's worth can run up to two hundred fifty bucks. And we're going to give one of those away to a lucky winner right now. So pick a number between one and two hundred and sixty-five. Ooh. Well, seeing as my mother is turning one hundred and one, I'm going to pick one hundred and one. Good. Good plan. <laughs> uh, Katie Moulton is the winner. Katie, Woo-hoo! congratulations. Uh, we'll be getting in touch with you on how to get your fly predators set up. You actually do have to talk to them because they ask you questions about your barn and all of that kind of thing. How many horses you have and all of that, because that depends how many fly predators you get. Yeah. So uh, we'll make sure we get you in touch with the Spalding people. And the second one is an annual subscription to U.S. Rider, which I have and Jamie has. The nice thing about U.S. Rider is it is the emergency service that covers your truck and your trailer and get your horses to the next location. They really are good about that stuff. It's an, a U.S.-based call center, so you're not talking to India. Um, yeah. You're talking to Americans who are going to try and set up getting your towing done or your car truck fixed. And the nice part about this is, too, it counts for all your cars and your trucks, whether you're hauling a trailer or not. That's so, nice. So it's like AAA, except AAA won't deal with your horses and your trailer. No. So no. that's the one nice thing about U.S. Rider. And this is also $200 value. You and you're going to pick between one and 265 and not 101. <laughs> okay, so my mother's birthday is on the 30th, so I'm going to pick 30. Okay. Sarah Hance is the winner Ooh. of U.S. Rider. We hope you can use that. And, and we, no, we hope you never have to use that. Exactly. That's, that's why you that's have the these. It's, it's why you have insurance, so you never have to use them. Yes. That's the hope. But congratulations to both of you. We'll be getting in touch with you to get in touch with them to get it all set up. Uh, and now it's time to hear a little Jamie and I from a couple of years ago doing some really bad ads. If you ain't met one by now, you're <laughs> bound to sooner or later. He says one thing and he means another, but hey, he can't help it. He's a horse trader. Horse trading. Well, it's a lazy fair, let the buyer beware. Horse trade, they tell a low down lie with a sincere stare. Horse trade, well, if they're talking in circles and the deal ain't square, he's a master in the fine art of persuading. Horse trade. Well, we should mention, by yeah. the way, that that's Dan Roberts, and you can find him all his music. That's an actual song that we took a clip out of, thanks to Dan. So Dan Roberts actually wrote Beaches and Shea in the Garth Brooks song. So uh, you can find all his – it used to be oldbootsmusic.com. You can check him out or just Google Dan Roberts. That sent in the first one. Oh, my God. She found one in southeast Oklahoma. That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> all right. It's a well-broke Bay Galden for 55 – wait, No. $550, so he's cheap, <laughs> well, broke by Gelden. Ten-year-old Gelden, well built, has shoes on right now. And they have been on for a while now. He gets along with any livestock, and he's been with goat, sheep, ducks, llama, barking dogs. Yeah, he gets along with horses, too. Most of the time, he stands still for anything. He does good for me, and almost anyone with horse sense can ride him, S-I-N-C-E. But when it comes to his back feet being shooed, he can be a butthead, comma, comma, exclamation point, exclamation point. He is not for a beginner horse farrier. He is a very easygoing horse has never offered a buck or kick except for that except for the farrier <laughs> i have fell off of him once when we had two of us on him and then a dog came up and <laughs> nipped his back leg and he uh, crow hopped a little bit and my friend lost his balance and so then we both slid off and another time my other friend was riding him and jumping some big logs and she was not holding on real well and she went over my horse's head and landed him <laughs> right in front of him on the ground and he's awesome riding even when other green boat horses are being stupid around him but he's not no deadhead neither the price on him is five hundred fifty dollars Cause I just looked at his feet the other day and the old shoes really need to come off and he needs his feet trimmed up and reshoed. And Kaju, we have a dry summer winter and most of the time I ride him barefooted, but these past six months he has been needing some shoes. Uh, he's not a big horse. You can call him. <laughs> wow. 
That was fantastic, Beth. Way to go. <laughs> so that tells me she had the shoes put on six months ago and they're still oh on. Oh, my God. <laughs> so so- Why can't I keep a dang shoe on for six months? I can't keep one on for six days. And the shoes haven't been put back on. Why, Jamie, have has there not been shoes done for six months? Because no farrier is going to come back out. Because he ain't for no beginner horse farrier. <laughs> He'll kick you. Word gets out. I think there's a blacklist with the farriers, too. They know. You're not going over that one. No, don't go over that one. Claire sent this one in. It's a black and white paint gelding in Marmaduke, wherever that is. $600. High-spirited sidewinder show-off horse video. High-spirited sidewinder show-off horse video. Beautiful 16.4 hands will prance and show off as long as you want walks sideways. He can flat move when you want him to. He's very quick. Extremely sweet boy. 11 years old. Must see in person. Sell OBL or trade. Let me know what kind of horse you got looking for a broke trail horse gated only. There's a lot going on in one sentence there. Cash Cash will ride trails, but also ride him in wanting something different. He is amazing horse. He must be going to great home. Please call. Would prefer to sell for cash $600 or best offer. I have no so high spirited sidewinder show off show horse video beautiful sixteen point four hands old print. So basically he jigs. He jigs is what I got out of that. Yeah. He no, sidesteps no. and jigs and he's gonna land you right on the ground, is what's gonna happen when he he's just gonna duck out from under you and you're gonna be on the ground. You'll on your on butt. <laughs> Sienna sent this one. This is in Gold Creek, and it's a title is wonderful cow horse for a thousand dollars. Butterfly. Butterfly is beautiful 14 I have never known a horse named Butterfly. Uh, So first, she's a wonderful cow horse. Butterfly is a beautiful 14. I'm trying to figure out where this, what. Gold cream. um, Like, I just feel like, like, if you have a horse named Butterfly, you're a child. Like, you're a kid. And you've written an ad about your horse named Butterfly. Gold Creek is not coming up, so I don't know where Gold Creek is. Well, I just, I feel like Butterfly is like my horse and she's like 14. She's a Bay (laughs) Mare and she's like 16 hands tall, is well broke and is a wonderful cow horse. But like, she would be good cutting, roping or just general ranch riding horse. However, you know... (laughs) She like does not like women and only men have been able to ride her. And other than that, she trailers pack stands good for grooming and trimming of her feet. And she has good hard feet and has never needed shoes and will go wherever, whenever, and will go forever. She gets along great with like other horses, but is like kind of a top dog kind of horse, but she's not mean, just like a little pushy. Just a little and pushy. She <laughs> is an outstanding broodmare and passes on her good nature to her foals. And we're asking $1,000 for her or we'll trade for a six ton of good quality hay or Ooh. a younger, but preferably broke Molly Mule, a four wheeler or garden plastic for a greenhouse. <laughs> Or butterfly. You can come check her out and ride her if you like, because like you'll fall in love with her. Oh, we guarantee it. Unless you're a woman <laughs> because she does not like you. So you're out in the field with your horse friends and you're a wonderful cow horse named Butterfly. And they say, Well, how'd you get here? How much did they sell you for? And you have to say, I was traded for some garden plastic for a greenhouse. How embarrassing is that? Um, you know what, but I think in the horse world, garden plastic for a greenhouse would be okay. Cause they don't really know what that is. But if they were like, mm, they traded for a mule, <laughs> they traded me for a mule. Uh, Uda oh. sent this one in Homer, AQHA Bay t- 22. <laughs> Let me try that again. I was going to say two th- it is a 2003 gelding. AQHA Bay 2003 gelding is a super athlete and very cowy. He has an ugly head. But you don't ride his head. He is tough, and he has great feet and bone, and will go all day, and he's smart. He's just getting started now. Wait a minute. How do you know he's got going to go all day if he's just getting started? He will be the best ranch gelding a person could have. Pretty as pretty does. <laughs> oh, God. He must be one ugly horse. He is pedigree is awesome with, oh, oh, here we go. All of the here names. Go. Here Come we go. On. He is with uh, Paco Buno, Buno, Buno. That's Poco Bueno. Poco Bueno. <laughs> Smart Little Lena. Pippi Docs. Peppy San. Pep all on the papers. Special $1,200. 
Why do I know quarter horse breeds better than you? I, Just because they pronounce words better than you. I don't do <laughs> I don't do Spanish words very well, and the, and every quarter horse name has Spanish words in it. Poco Bueno, Smart Little Lena, Peppy Docs, and Peppy Sands, they's all on the papers. <laughs> you, you picked that up living in Oklahoma. I, I do have a problem with is just getting started now, but they know he's going to be the best ranch horse in life. He'll go all day. He'll go all day, apparently, okay. but I don't know how they know that. They haven't written it Leilani yet. sent this one in. Cow for sales. God, it's a cow trade. day here. <laughs> it's a cow day. $200. Eric is a cow. <laughs> Actually, Eric would not be a cow if he's a he, right? I mean, I know that much. He is halter broke and half saddle broke. He is very good with children. He has not even won yet, so he can't hold that much weight. I'm selling Eric because I would like a horse to ride with my friends, but Eric is too small and some of my friends can't ride him. I always wanted a horse, but my mom couldn't afford one, but I will raise cows. Oh, Eric really mom. is a cow. I <laughs> thought. Yeah, yeah, no, this is a cow. Um, I thought it was one of those Facebook ads where they were trying to sell something, you know, getting away with it, you know. But. Yeah, uh, well, the, the mom just had their offspring, T-H-E-R-E, offspring le- about last summer, and I took to the baby boy, Eric. I asked my mom for a horse, but she just said no, so I taught Eric like a horse. <laughs> if you're interested in Eric, please call. God, Thank I want you. Eric. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I want Eric. Eric is a, not a cow. He's a, a bull. Is he a steer? Like, what? what is Eric? Anyway, Mary, moving on. I wonder on. what half saddle broke means. You can put the saddle on. You can kind of get on him, but he'll, <laughs> he'll only let you sit on for about, let's say, eight seconds. You need to be on, so you can only be on him four. Four. <laughs> All right. Uh, Emily sent this one in. Hi, Jamie and Glenn. This hey, is hi. Emily from Virginia. And this is my first time submitting a really bad ad. My ad is coming from the Horses in SWVA Facebook page. And it reads, God, I love this handsome man! Exclamation mark. Coming to Y.O. Stud pony horse I call Hershey. Nice lick to him. That's right. I said lick. L-I-C-K. Not look, but lick. And I think that was written intentionally. Nice lick to him. Gorgeous color and sweet as chocolate. Exclamation. Exclamation. Exclamation mark. 1500 <laughs> OBO. And that's it. That's the ad. There's about five pictures of this little chocolate guy. And I guess if you're looking for... And have always dreamed of a stud, a pony, a horse, and an equine that you can lick and taste like chocolate all in (laughs) one. Then here he is. Okay, Emily, I would like to extend an invitation to you to submit an ad every single week. I could listen to your Swedish sugar voice for the rest of my days and I would never get tired of it. That so Emily, well too. that was your first one and uh, welcome coming. to the show. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Uh, Colleen sent this one in. Eight-year-old quarter happy mare, $100. This is an outstanding mare who with a lot of time and dedication will turn into a great animal. She's, why do I get in all of these today? One day they're going to be great. I just know it. Someday, Someday these are going to be a great horse. Not now, but later. Uh, she's green, and that's kind of an understatement. She's hard to catch when she's put in an open place, but once she's caught, she's fine with being loved and brushed. She does not load in a two-horse trailer for some reason. I'm guessing she's never been in one. She really skittish and doesn't like her ears being touched. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the good parts. She will stand for the farrier and stand tight. Okay, well, that's good. I think I think the home she was from before was abusive because she's afraid of her own shadow. I wanted to work with her for barrels, but have to move and can't afford to take her with me or board her somewhere. She would be great broodmare. No, don't. <laughs> she would be a great broodmare as well because she's short and stocky. That's what we're going for. (laughs) She's very smart and with the right set of hands could go in any direction. She's 14, too, and beautiful. Just don't have time for her like she needs. 
the whole first keep... paragraph was negatives. And then I love when they go all the negatives. There's a dozen negatives there. And then, they, oh, be a good rude bear, because that's exactly what we want. Yeah. Did I, did I tell you what I didn't tell you? Do you want to hear a confession? Oh, no. What'd you do? I didn't, I didn't do anything oh, yet. Okay. So Abby and I are in the barn, and we're realizing, like, we don't have any full watching to do this year. There's no babies coming because every other year we've had a baby. We had Stanley and two years before that we had Zara and we don't have any babies coming. And so I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for a pregnant mare that's due in the spring and maybe I'll find a nice one that's going to have a nice baby. And I went online and I found a paint mare that is in full to a Frisian. And they had all these pictures of her offspring and they're all black or black and white spotty Frisian paint crosses. And I was like, Oh my God, I think maybe, you know, she's already pregnant. It's already the dirt. The, <laughs> no. the, the deed is already done. I should, I should buy this horse. It's in Ohio. So, um, I, I contacted the owners and I'm like, hi, I'm really interested. I'd love to see pictures of the mare because She's 14. Turns out she's had nine babies and she's 14. That's a lot of babies. Um, so uh, she's like, I don't have any pictures of the mare. I'm like, how do you not have pictures of the mare? Send me some pictures of the mare or some video or something. She's like, well, okay, I found a video, but we were trying to get the video of the full. So you can just see the mare running in the background. I'm like, why can't you just go take a damn picture of the mare? <laughs> Whatever. So I go, she sends me this video and she's like, she's a great mare. She's a great mama. She's fantastic. She's got good bloodlines. Glenn. I hope this lady doesn't listen to the show because she knows what I'm talking about. That is the ugliest mare I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, dear God, why would you think to breed that thing? It was like if you put four trees and you kind of planted them near each other, but like not in any sort of line. That was her four oh, legs, no. like tree trunks. And like nine babies later, bless her heart, she's all stretched out. I mean, and I she's bet. lame in every Everybody leg. Everybody stretched uh, out after nine babies. <laughs> oh, dear God. And I just thought, uh, you know what? Like, uh, fine. She's a, in full to a nice Frisian, but th she's still half of the equation. You know, like, she's like, you can't just say only color come out of you and then nothing else. We're going to have the rest of you look like the Frisian. It doesn't work like that. So this poor mare, I was like, if I get that mare and I fall out the baby, what am I going to do with a 15 year old mare that's had at this point, 10 babies and she's 15 and she's lame everywhere. I was like, yeah, I don't need that. I don't need to deal with it. So you'd be very proud of me. I did talk to Chad about it. I did tell him what we were thinking about. And he's, of course, like, oh, my God. He was like, do I need Glenn to get the <laughs> audio of what you said last time? And you were like, I'm never doing this again. You said that. Well, and I probably have it on audio. I could find it. Yeah, Chad would like you to dig that up <laughs> and play it for me when I have these little, like, oh my god, I have a baby. It's not my. I'm Chad so and I are very happy that this thing had four legs that went completely opposite directions. Oh my <laughs> god, she was ugly. Bless her heart. But like, why would you think? You know what? I'm gonna breathe this one. To a Frisian. She was like 14 hands tall. Oh, <laughs> bless her heart. Anyway. That's a, if anybody wants, she was a really good deal. She was a really good deal. Anyway, moving on. Um, Rachel sent this last one in. I just I had to confess to you, Glenn, because I can't. I confess. am proud of you that you you didn't let your heart overrule your 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 wisdom. Down? Are you so proud? I'm so proud. I of am you. proud of you. It's the first time in ten years. I'm really proud. <laughs> Okay, Rachel sent this one, and she would require it, request that it would be in a teenage voice. I'm sure it sounds just like it. So here we go. Oh, yeah, it's a horse wanted ad. That's always a teenager. Horse wanted for like $1,000. I am looking for a horse that is like priced from free to $1,000. <laughs> As free is not a price, honey. I would like a horse that is like priced from free to one thousand dollars, and here is totally what I'm looking for. Okay, like it needs to be between one and five years old, and I'm wanting a height between fifteen and sixteen hands. Good luck finding that at one years old. Anyway, moving on, and I really need it to be either black, dabble gray, paint, or buckskin in color. Okay. And it must be like halter broke. <laughs> and if it's over three, it's got to be like green broke. And I'm willing to consider some vices, but like absolutely no cribbing. This part is a stretch, but I would like to be able to board the horse at your house. 
I would like come by daily to clean up, feed, work the horse, and like do any other farm work you would like done. It's really a great opportunity for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why she wanted the teenage boys. <laughs> if interested, if you like email me or insta me or like snap me or Facebook me or like TikTok me, leave your number and like the best way and time to contact you. Which, by the way, I did all of those. She just said email, but it was implied. Um, <laughs> thank you so very much. I mean, this Glenn is like a great opportunity for both of for them. both of us. That's right, both of us. <laughs> <laughs> and she does not want no bay horse, no bay horse, no bays. No, We're not on that even, list. I, I just know. like want her no to romance. know. Did you know Dapple Gray doesn't stay right? Like <laughs> they don't stay. Dapple Double gray forever. Okay. <laughs> that was that was a good one. Well read. Well read. Well done. I'm proud of you today. Down. Look, you turned down a horse that you could have fallen for and five why years ago. Why would somebody breed a paint in a Frisian? I don't understand why you would do that. But the a, deed was already done and they need a my Frisian. help. It's a Frisian. Uh, a freint. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good freint. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, little retro, really bad ads. Uh, Lisa and I are going to head out now. We have to get to the holiday. We hope you all have a, a happy Easter and a, a good holiday weekend. Don't eat too much chocolate uh, this weekend. <laughs> when do you head back home to Tennessee? I'm headed back on Monday, okay. so April Fool's Day. All right. Well, we, oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's As longtime listeners will know, we do not – do anything April Fool's related because uh, Jamie breaks out in hives. So uh, <laughs> she worked in mainstream radio where April Fool's things were, you know, well, morning drive thing, radio yeah. is a big thing. And she just hates it with a passion. Yes. So I've never <laughs> she I've never played a trick on her because I just would not go well. No. So thank you, Lisa, for filling in. We appreciate it. No post show, everybody. Uh, we run a little long anyway. So have a terrific weekend. We'll see you all on Monday. <laughs> <laughs>